I began mountain climbing when I was seven years old. And by the time I was 16, I was the top five climbers in the United States. When I was 17, I was on a mountain climbing venture with my partner, Jeff Batzer, in the Northeast. We were struck by a multi-day storm. After struggling to survive for many days, we were rescued and suffered severe frostbite and hypothermia. And after months of effort, my medical team gave up the fight to save my biological legs and they were amputated just below the knee. I didn't pay attention a great deal in high school. If you would have asked me after graduation, Hugh, what's 10% of 100? I would just blank face, I'd have no idea. I learned how to make things out of wood and metal. And those technical skills actually came in handy because I knew something about how to cut, grind, and metal and other materials. I bought books on mathematics and basic biology and started reading them. I was like, oh, that's what a percent is? That's really simple. Started out in computer science and then transitioned to physics. I wanted to understand the fundamentals of the physical sciences so that I would be in a better position to design augmentation devices like artificial limbs. After the accident, I designed my own artificial limbs to return to the vertical world of rock and ice climbing. And to my surprise and everyone's surprise, I climbed better with artificial limbs than I'd climbed before the accident with biological limbs. That completely inspired me about technology and human augmentation. My goal was to not only restore my own physicality, but the physicality of broadly people with all forms of limb pathology. At MIT, we advanced the fundamental science and technology to do total limb reconstruction. It spans many, many disciplines from machine learning to robotics to sensing genetics to tissue engineering. One of my favorite areas of our current work is our problem solving around how to link the nervous system to a mechatronic device that's integrated into the human body. Thinking about how to transmit signals from artificial sensors on the wearable robot into actually nerve signals that go to the brain. In today's world, when a body difference is visible, society makes such a fuss about it. There's these persons with leg amputations that are tremendous athletes that wear these springy running legs. Some very talented athletes have even competed in the Olympics. I'm sometimes asked if you could have biological limbs, would you? And the answer is no. The biological part of my body is getting worse in time and actually my bionic limbs are getting better in time.